Greetings to you from Garage Number 1. Stories about legends, it is series about most iconic cars in the world. There's another legend in our series, Audi RS6 C8. If there was a default choice when faced with the need for a practical car in a dream garage, it might just be the Audi RS6 Avant. Now in its fourth iteration, Audi has taken everything that made previous RS6s brilliant and just improved upon it, while adding a dose of driver interaction that its predecessors lacked. Audi RS6 exhibits all the characteristics you expect, a feeling of impenetrability, huge performance, long-distance refinement, and a well-built and practical cabin. There have been changes in each quality, of course, but nothing particularly out of the ordinary. What's different, though, is that the RS6 Avant now gives something back to the driver. Drive quickly down a twisting road and the car's agility, responsiveness, and adjustability are all qualities that we've only really seen from Audi Sport with cars such as the R8. The RS6 is technologically advanced, but not simply for the sake of it. There is the thorny issue of price, with even the basic car now over the $130,000 mark. Rivals are similarly expensive, of course, but it's still an eye-opener. And despite good cruising economy, the RS6 is still likely to be quite expensive to run too, for something that will probably serve as a family vehicle for many owners. But that shouldn't take away from the car's undoubted talents, this wagon is both fast and fun. You should probably be sitting down for this, because a basic, option-free RS6 Avant will cost you a $130,000 on the road including the first year's tax, shipping and registration. The Carbon Black Edition lifts this to $140,000 on the road, and the range-topping Vorsprung is $155,000. Of course, you're getting a lot of car for the money, very literally, at over 2 tons, but even the basic RS6 is well-stocked. Standard kit includes 21-inch wheels, matrix LED headlights with laser technology, a pair of MMI touchscreens, leather sport seats, rear-wheel steering and a sport rear differential. The Carbon Black upgrades the wheels to 22 inches, and adds a styling package consisting of carbon fiber trim for the front spoiler, skirts and diffuser insert, with a gloss black Audi badge and black window trim. The Vorsprung also gets 22-inch alloy wheels, RS Sport suspension plus with dynamic ride control, a top speed bump to 174 miles per hour, gloss black styling elements and a panoramic glass sunroof. Audi's standard color palette is little to shout about, but $4,000 and up will unlock access to Audi exclusive paintwork options, which brighten things up considerably. Wheels of the 22-inch variety are a $3,000 option on the basic car, and a host of other options are available on top of that, from a $2,000 sports exhaust to $1,700 for the DRC suspension. With no M5 Touring, the most obvious rival for the RS6 Avant is Mercedes-AMG's E63S Estate. Similarly potent and similarly priced but with quite a different feel, more organic, more rowdy, but less capable, the fast AMG is as much a reassuring constant in this class as the Audi. Porsche's Panamera Sport Turismo is another contender, with the $180,000 Turbo S being the closest in terms of outright performance, but the $145,000 GTS being both sweeter to drive and more on par in terms of price, even if it gives up over 100 brake horsepower to the Audi. There's a proper motor under the bonnet of this RS6, a 4-liter V8 with a pair of turbochargers strapped to it, thumping out 592 brake horsepower and 590 pounds-feet of torque. That's about 150 horses and 160 pounds-feet of torque more than the original, 2002 Audi RS6 produced. To that Audi attaches an 8-speed torque converter automatic gearbox, which drives all four wheels through a torsion center differential and a standard sport differential at the rear axle. The center diff has a 40-60 to 60 torque split front to rear, but in certain situations can direct up to 70% of the power forwards or as much as 85% to the rear wheels. The RS6 also includes Audi's 48V mild hybrid technology, though it really is fairly mild, less about supplementing drive and more about reducing alternator load and using the big 48V electrical system to handle minor systems instead of drawing all that power from the engine. Another concession to fuel efficiency is cylinder deactivation, which is pretty much imperceptible to the driver and as we've discovered on longer trips, relatively effective at calming the RS6's long-distance fuel consumption. The other key technology for the RS6, as used in certain conventional A6 models, as well as the A7 and A8, is rear-wheel steering. 
It has the ability to turn the rear wheels 5 degrees in the opposite direction to those at the front at low speeds, and up to 2 degrees in the same direction above 62 miles per hour. It's not a fixed ratio either, with deeply complex electronics determining how far the wheels should steer based on factors such as road speed, cornering load, driver input, and more. Finally, there's the suspension setup, a dedicated Audi Sport variation on Audi's air suspension as standard, with a more conventional coil sprung and adaptive damper combination, dubbed dynamic ride control, as an option. Air sprung cars should be the more comfortable combination, with greater control from the adaptive setup. It's difficult to imagine wanting more performance from something that can carry a family of five and their hound. Despite weighing in at 2,075 kilograms, the RS6 will sprint to 62 miles per hour, with little driver effort, in 3.6 seconds. Flat out it will top 155 miles per hour, though Audi will lift the limiter to 189 miles per hour if you ask it nicely. From behind the wheel the figures feel less dramatic than you'd expect, simply because the RS6 makes it so easy. It's very much a car that'll press you back into your seat, and its real party trick is replicating that mighty off-the-line acceleration even when the surface is wet or greasy, with all-wheel drive, a limited slip differential at the rear and 275mm wide tires at all four corners, traction is not an issue. But so simple is the process, it all feels surprisingly serene. The V8's natural refinement plays a part too. While it becomes more vocal at higher revs and emits a traditional V8 note under hard acceleration, it's a smooth and cultured unit and in everyday driving almost fades into the background. Response is slightly delayed by the machinations of the gearbox, which can take a few beats to deliver its power to the wheels off the line, or if you ask it to kick down, but switch to manual mode and you can stonk along quite nicely. Shifts are quick, though Audi has a little still to learn when it comes to theater, the paddles behind the wheel feel pretty ordinary given the drivetrain they're controlling. This is one of the great surprises of the latest RS6, in that it has both a very livable ride quality when its comfort damping mode is selected, and also agile and even involving handling qualities, neither of which was a given with previous generations. As we learned on the launch of the RS7, a car with which this RS6 shares the majority of its mechanicals, Audi has worked very hard with its recent generation of S and RS models in areas that don't just improve objective measures of performance, but also subjective ones. Stiffer bushings, better matching of suspension to wheels and tires and retuned behavior for the steering were all on the jobs list, and the engineer's work has been well worth it as almost every performance Audi we've driven recently has driven better, where it really matters, than its immediate predecessor. The ace up the RS6's sleeve though is rear-wheel steering, which gives it an agility rivals can't match. There are times that, despite being 5mm under 5m long, it feels more compact than its smaller RS4 sibling, and it's a difference amplified when you're tackling a typical alpine road with switchbacks and sweeping constant radius corners. The RS6 turns in positively, hangs on mid-corner like you wouldn't believe, and exits cleanly in a way no car this big or heavy has any right to. It would all be for naught too if the steering wasn't up to snuff, but while the rack still isn't overly chatty, there's a clarity to its response, progression, and weighting that makes cornering a totally intuitive process. Rarely does the RS6 feel its weight, under braking and over crests is about the extent of it, and with the sport diff standard, there's even a distinctly rear-driven feel when you get on the power early when the outside tires are loaded up. And as alluded to before, the RS6 also now has enough composure over poor surfaces to make it a usable performance car not just on smooth continental tarmac but also on the rougher stuff this side of the channel. While its big wheels, up to 22 inches in diameter, aren't immune from really lumpy bits, the level of compliance is very impressive and doesn't deteriorate too drastically in the sportier mode settings. Air sprung models definitely have more float and less body control, even in their firmer modes, but still have plenty of ability. If you're really serious about cornering your two-ton monster then you should tick the dynamic ride control box, but for most the air setup could be an ideal compromise. Where once the RS6 was fast but inert, the latest car is even faster, but also a car that responds faithfully enough to inputs that you now feel like a driver rather than an operator. It's a subtle difference, but for people like us, an important one too. Mild hybrid technology and cylinder deactivation do their best to pull respectable fuel economy figures from an otherwise performance-orientated engine. They're not magic though, so a combined figure of up to 22.8 miles per gallon is as high as you're getting officially, 
and CO2 a minimum of 281 grams per kilometer, putting it in the highest VED bracket. The reality might actually be better though. While the V8 will indeed slurp fuel when you're using its full potential, we found the RS6 surprisingly frugal on a longer run, achieving a nice round 30 miles per gallon. The cylinder deactivation kicks in quite frequently if you keep things steady, and a coasting function in the transmission allows the engine to kick out when you decelerate, starting up instantly when you prod the accelerator. Nothing in here should come as too much of a shock to longtime Audi owners, with the latest A6 cabin, and by extension the RS6, having the same levels of material quality, fit and finish and comfort as previous generations. Where this latest cabin makes a larger step is in its use of haptic touchscreen controls for minor functions, something being slowly rolled out across the entire Audi range. Objectively it works pretty well, the haptic vibrations doing their stuff to let you know when you've pressed a button, and being among the less distracting screen setups with large controls for air conditioning or audio functions on the two screens. Subjectively it's still not as satisfying or distraction-free as proper buttons, and some drivers may simply not get on with the layout, or take longer to get used to it. Worth noting too that the screens do pick up fingerprints, so regular cleaning will be required to keep the cabin looking the way Audi designed it. Other than that, and a slightly dour vibe typical of Audis, there's little to complain about. The third screen, Audi's virtual cockpit, is as clear and easy to use as ever. The steering wheel with its dimpled leather feels great, it's easy to find the perfect driving position, and everything you're likely to touch feels high quality. Rear room is good and with a 565 liter boot, expanding to 1680 liter seats down, it fits the usual Avant practicality brief too. Whatever you think of the more aggressive direction Audi design chief Mark Licht is taking the brand, there's no denying the RS6 has massive presence. From memory it seems like only a gentle evolution of the old RS6, but side by side the difference between old and new is absolutely barmy, probably greater than the difference between the old RS6 and the standard A6 Avant it was based upon. The whole car looks longer, lower and wider than before, a sensation accentuated by the much wider front grille, slimmer headlights and tail lights, and arches that are more prominently blistered than ever before. From some angles it can seem like a busy concoction of shapes, but from the side in particular it almost has the proportions of a Hot Wheels car, particularly on the larger 22-inch alloy wheel option. Thank you for attention. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and Facebook page and stay tuned for the next story from Garage Number 1.